Alex of Dig Primal here today. I wanted to address a very important question that I get asked all the time, and that is, are NSAIDs bad? And by NSAIDs, I mean non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. It's a mouthful, so we say NSAIDs. So um, the real discussion here today is going to be how NSAIDs lead to gut permeability, because they do in a number of ways. But that being said, sometimes there are situations where we still want to use them. So you got a really bad headache or you strained your neck or pulled a muscle. Sometimes we want to be able to use NSAIDs, um, even though we know that they can potentially cause gut permeability. So the more important thing to really know is how to minimize damage if you do choose to take them. So first, let's talk about how they can actually help uh, hurt your gut permeability. So... Really, I think about the way it does, NSAIDs do this in two ways. They can impair defense and they can decrease healing. So the way that they impair defense, you can see here, the first way is that they can reduce mucus and bicarbonate secretion. So obviously, the especially in the stomach, it's an acidic environment and sometimes or the acid gets put into the rest of the um, what the next part of the intestine was called the duodenum, and then bicarb is the and the mucus and everything is there to protect the tissues against the acid, and even in the stomach that's true, and so having adequate mucus and bicarb secretion is really important. The thing is, NSAIDs oftentimes decrease that, so that's the first defense against uh, damage. The problem after that is that they also decrease mucosal blood flow. And that means that the mucosa, as it's being potentially damaged from the decreased mucus and bicarb secretion, is also not able to mount a response to that and bring healing nutrients and all of those things to the mucosa. The second, what, the second big category is decreased healing. Um, the first one of this is reduced angi angiogenesis, which is just a fancy way of saying new blood cells are being formed, blood vessels, excuse me, are being formed. So um, when there's reduced blood flow and reduced mucus, generally as the damage begins to mount, your body will make new vessels to bring more blood flow to the area. Unfortunately, NSAIDs decrease angiogenesis, and that doesn't really happen as well. Um, the other things they do, though, even though it reduces blood flow overall, it increases the adherence of inflammatory cells, leukocytes, which aren't bad cells. They're there to help you mount a response to, to damage, so inflammation, all that stuff. But the thing is, if too many of them adhere and become activated in the tissues, that can actually lead to more damage. And then... The last part of this is impaired platelet aggregation. Platelets are cells that help stop bleeding. Uh, like if you nick yourself, they aggregate, they essentially clot um, the, the damaged area, and then other um, pro blood products come and stabilize the blood clot. Uh, especially aspirin does this, where if you've taken aspirin, your platelets are no longer all that effective. Uh, obviously, that goes away, and as you make new platelets, the effect is decreased, but aspirin is known for doing this. So all of this together is why NSAIDs generally get a bad rep, and um, people say that they can damage your gut because they do all these things. So the end result really starts out with initial mucosal injury, then goes to increased gut permeability, and then that can lead to activation of the immune system because in your gut, uh, the immune system is located right outside of the gut. Where it, it's kind of sitting there waiting for you to, you know, the things that you absorb that you that need to be dealt with. The immune system is sitting there waiting. And when you increase your gut permeability and let more inflammatory things in, more toxins, more bacterial byproducts, all of that. You get activation of the immune system and that leads to a host of problems, uh, mainly, um, you know, you get headaches, you can get allergies, um, just general inflammation in the body. So none of these are all 
that great. So that sounds like, all right, why would you ever use NSAIDs, right? I don't think that's necessarily true. I don't believe in really being dogmatic about using medication if you really need it. So when I have thrown at my back before, which I have, unfortunately, it really hurts. And the thing is, if I let that inflammation go in my back, when there's acute damage that could potentially lead to further problems on the road and increased chance of me re hurting my back over and over and over again and leading to permanent damage. So when I've done that in the past, I have taken NSAIDs at the recommended dose, like 600 milligrams, three times a day, icing, all of that stuff. So sometimes it just, you need to take them. But the good news is that there are multiple compounds and multiple things we can do to help minimize the damage. So here they are. One of my favorite things is L-glutamine. I love it for a lot of things. Um, it helps with um, sugar cravings as well, so that's kind of fun. But the reason L-glutamine works in this case is that it's the primary amino acid that is source for GI mucosal cells. So it's basically fuel for cells. And then the other things it does is helps with junctional integrity. Jun the tight junctions are the basically the glue between the mucosal cells that hold them together and don't let things through so that increased gut permeability and what's known as leaky gut doesn't happen as much with l-glutamine so i will take that along with the nsaids the other thing i'll take is not all at once necessarily i'm just saying these are some options um, you can take deglycerosinated licorice it's really hard to say most people just say dgl um, so I take that they, um, DGL helps with the production of new mucosal cells. So if there is damage or pre-existing damage or ongoing damage, you'll, it can help stimulate. It also can help coat the mucosa of the intestinal tract. So it's basically just like if you're decreasing the mucus and the bicarb secretion, it's basically acting as that barrier, the physical barrier. The third thing that I like is milk thistle. I love the non, uh, the alcohol free tinctures, but milk thistle, in addition to being really good for the liver because it helps decrease glutathione depletion, the thing that it does in the gut is decreases oxidative damage in the, in the gut cells. So it basically anything that's causing inflammation and oxidative damage there, it helps mitigate that. The fourth thing that I like is quercetin, and it's an it's a active compound of um, turmeric. So that increases tight junctions. Um, so the same as the L-glutamine, basically just keeps that leaky gut from happening um, quite as much. And then it stabilizes mast cells, and mast cells um, help regulate intestinal tight junctions as well. But the way it does it is through signaling mediators so it um basically makes the cells functional better and give feedback like we need to tighten up the tight junctions we need to um you know upregulate certain receptors down regulate other ones so it's good for that the way i usually you can there are supplements a lot of times um in nutrient boot camp especially when i'm doing it which is most of the time um, I like using turmeric in a lot of my foods, and I also use it in teas. It doesn't have the most pleasant taste by itself, so I mix it into other compounds with, you know, like black tea and peppermint and things like that, and it's not so bad. So, but there are pills out there for that. And then the last thing, which you've probably heard of, is probiotics. Probiotics are amazing for many things. They regulate the immune system, so if you do have activation of the immune system it can help temper that response uh, and then it can uh, the probiotics also help decrease inflammatory markers in the body they basically help the immune system uh, know when to mount a response and when to decrease it and so probiotics when you have damage occurring can really help with that so those are my five favorite ones i hope you found that helpful and I'm hoping that you will come over to digprimal.com and in the comment section, let me know which interventions are you planning on trying first? If you are going to take NSAIDs, what would you try first? Uh, stop by and let me know. Have a great day. Bye.